gon' step up for me Make sure my fans stay cause my daughter gotta eat and thank you for coming back to my channel that is Gail Chanel Sport Aids World and I want to say thank you for your continued support and remember to continue liking my videos sharing my videos and as well as subscribing especially if you haven't done so at this time subscribe 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 to my channel thank you I really appreciate it but let's go on and get into this must-see video we're going to be covering marital medicine um season 7 episode 11 is titled busted Cabo. Okay, I'm gonna go on and get right on into it. We got the winners of the dance contest that Dr. Simone and her husband Cecil had put together on who would also have a penthouse suite along with them. Of course, they're the married couple. They're the ones out there celebrating their 23rd anniversary, wedding anniversary that is. So it came out to find that the uh, winners of the dance contest was Dr. Heavily and her husband, Damon. Then we got uh, them, meaning um, Dr. Simone and Cecil, giving them a winner's gift uh, for performing real well and winning the penthouse suite. They gave them some gummy underwear. <laughs> Like, they just going to be sucking on each other and just eating their underwear away before they get busy. Okay, too much information, right? So, we're going to leave that scene. We got everybody leaves to go to their room, but Quad is out way away from the couple's area. I mean, she's in room five, but how they got that hotel set up, she is way, way, way from the couples like she on another island somewhere every time they kept showing everybody getting to their room like dr heaven and her husband jack and her husband simone and her husband uh let me see who else was left uh eugene and toya and mariah and her husband and contessa and her husband shoot all of them got settled in their room and uh quad was still trying to find her one bedroom suite <laughs> So, doggone it. So, they finally end up getting to Quad's one bedroom suite. suite. He finally arrives. And, um, you know, they did a confessional where Dr. Simone and Cecil was talking about Quad. And she said she wasn't trying to shade Quad. She, she know Quad don't want their husbands. So she wasn't really trying to separate uh, Quad from them because of that reason. She gave Quad that much space away from them because she wanted to have equal amount of time with herself because that's who she truly loves herself. Now, is that some shade among shade? I tell you. We leave that situation. We go to all the couples show up for dinner, but um, prior to them showing that scene, Aiden has already went and talked with um, Dr. Simone and Cecil saying that Mariah's not really feeling well and they're going to bow out gracefully from tonight's dinner and they're just going to stay in their room and chill. But on, um, you know, every episode that comes up that the couples take a trip, they show clips that Mariah never dines with them that first night. <laughs> she's always coming up sick. She's frustrated. She don't want to be bothered, this, that, and the third. So that was well expected that they knew Mariah, as well as Aiden, was not going to attend that first dinner the night they got there. So we move on from that situation. We got them riding along. Once the rest of the couples come down for dinner that night, they uh, show them like they in some really secluded desert type uh, destination. They're in this little rinky, but it's a Mercedes uh, a minivan bus or whatnot. And it's creeping along pretty well, but they're, you know, seems like it's being filmed like in a scary movie type of setting or scene because it's dark and not a lot of lights and you know, they going around to buy, if I come up missing this, that, and the third, or if y'all have to eat me, you know, to save consumptions, you know, because y'all are starving or whatnot. Just, you know, playing little antics like that. But we move on from there. We got Dr. Heblin. Uh, let me see. Why? Oh, I'm sorry. They go into a situation where um, before they go to dinner, Dr. Heaven is calling herself wanting some brown liquor. And, you know, everybody getting their drinks and it's pretty much way uh, made up with white liquor. 
a rock or whatever, clear rock. But she like, mm -mm, I need some hen and say, I need some crown. I, you know, I like, oh. And then she ended up kind of like regurgitating it up, and everybody looking at her like she crazy. I'm like, I can't drink that white liquor. I like, you had a alleged, allegedly a drinking problem prior, a uh, sim somewhat. Uh, uh, on the upcoming seasons before they brought you on, when they brought you on, Dr. Heblin, you were having some cup issues. You know, everything was in this little cup or mug, and they showed clips about that, too. Like, mm hmm you drinking a little bit too much, baby girl. But anyway, move from that situation. Got Dr. Jack and thank Simone and Cecil once they do get down at the table, and they call themselves going to be uh, festive and partake. But prior to that, her and Cecil, not for her, Cecil, uh, she starts off getting giving uh, Cecil and uh, Dr. Simone a uh, congratulatory type speech about their anniversary and this, that, and the third. And if it wasn't for them uh, making sure their, their relationship was solid and they stayed together, she don't really think her and Curtis would have stayed together because they were going through a rough patch at one time and they only had them to lean on each other to see that, you know, marriage can work. Out, even if you have like a lot of bad things going on, they were like the epitome type of couple that went through it, resolved the issue, and stayed together and fought the fight. At, you know, up until this point that they're celebrating their twenty third mm -hmm. wedding anniversary. Then you had Curtis. You know, I'm thinking he's gonna be eloquently speaking or whatnot, and he's looking at a cue card or something he don't wrote down, and it just pans back to him looking at them. Then he goes back to his sheet of paper trying to read some off. I'm like, what? he was a dumb jock or something I'm, I'm just not feeling Curtis at all and it seems like this particular episode Curtis demeanor and his behavior and just his whole makeup has kind of kind of like manifested itself on Dr. Jacket but she was just low down and dirty this particular episode I don't think I could even like even think about going to her just being my position because she's just totally nasty I just could not fathom that anybody would want to still be around her or hang around her hell or even tape with her but she was just oh if you saw the episode you could see where i was going with all this nastiness she was giving us but anyway we moved from that situation we got contestants asked buffy how she feels about uh the group since she's the newest one coming to the group to stand third and she said you can't worry about dr heblin dr heblin is mean to everybody you know you just got to get used to her um, this that, and thirty Dr. Heavenly going to my oh contestant, shut up, this that and thirty. We know because we know Dr. Heavenly too. And she did give contestant a hard time when she first came in. So it's almost like um an initiation type thing. Excuse me, that you go through and um Dr. Heavenly was the one to put it on her or whatnot. But she's saying she survived, Dr. Heaven, don't bother her. No, don't be bothered with her. She just crazy pretty much. Pay her no mind. But then um, uh, Buffy does speak up and said, you know, yeah, she's doing well with everyone else, but she did not like how Dr. Jackie had through her business out there on Front Street for everybody to partake of, you know. And then Jack, Dr. Jackie was like, excuse me, are you talking to me? Da, 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 da. And Jack, Jackie responds back to her, talking about she is the voice uh, for people. <laughs> I'm like, Ooh, who is the people you referring to, Jackie? Who should you be talking about yourself and your pain and your endeavors and how you uh, process everything and you go forth and be great? You take your pain and turn it into something positive. Should you be talking about you, honey? You, not uh, putting everybody else's business out on Front Street. They didn't give you that privilege or honor to do that service for them. But she's, you know, talking about a pain uh, to a purpose and this, that, and third, and team. Uh, too much, you know, her Buffy, you know, she's like, nah, we, I didn't need to spread and all that. You know, and Jackie says she, you know, receives it, she apologized for it, and she want to have dinner. But they ain't through with it, because uh, Toya, you know, my girl Toya, she's always up there talking crap, and she don't even like Buffy at first, because of the Joyce Hernandez situation, and Buffy had invited her to a party, and she thought it was like a setup or whatever, but Toya came out the bushes, honey, and got on Jackie's ass, saying, nah, uh-uh, that wasn't right what you did, Jackie. She might have told you that, but I'm sure she told you that in confidence. And, you know, Jackie was trying to refute it and rebuttal it and all this stuff. But, you know, everybody at the table looked like, nah, Jackie, that shit was wrong. And Curtis, her husband, should have spoke up and said, you know, what she did was kind of foul. 
uh, I apologize for her, or Jack apologized to that girl, you know what I'm saying, just squash it, but, you know, he didn't say that, he was looking away, and I mean, you know, we want the men to say anything, because it was a woman's situation, and the women should have handled it appropriately. Jack is talking about, she speaks out about issues, but she gets mad, you know, at Toya and Buffy for coming at her wrongly, and, you know, she pretty much shits down, uh, or she shuts down them both, and, you know, she's just being mean, like that mean girl spirit coming out of her, or uh, mean girl set up, you know, you go to a new school, and you, you got the cool people, you got the jocks, you got this, that, and then you got the mean people that think they own the place or whatnot, and that's what Jack has seen, like she has turned herself into, um, and it was just, it was just terrible. The energy she had put out there, it was just like, did you not forget that was not your business to tell? And that's pretty much what, you know, Tori was trying to tell her. You know, Jackie, you know, if you would have told my business about I lost my baby, I would have been mad because that was my story to tell. Not for you to go up on your platform and make me as an example as a success story. No, that's foul. And honey, Jackie just got mad, honey. She was like, mm-mm, that mean girl came out of her. She said, oh, this mean one is showing up tonight. And she was telling her husband she didn't even feel like eating no more. She just wanted to go to her room. She said, too bad we can't take her Uber. I said, why don't you Uber yourself bad? Better yet, you and Jackie should have never stayed together because you were making her turn into an evil, bitter, resentful woman, Curtis. And it's all stemming from you. I put that blame on your street, okay? Then we leave that situation. We got Dr. Jackie is telling Buffy uh, pretty much all she didn't want to hear no more. She ain't apologize no more. Get over it. Then we got Dr. Hamlin wants to make her point. She apologize. Uh, well, she addresses Buffy. She said they uh, want to be. Jack is not that kind of person. Everybody kind of took it wrong. Just said the third. And we're like, Dr. Hamlin, you acting like Cynthia on Real Housewives. Don't down. Shut your mouth. Stay up there. Look pretty. Just close your mouth. Zip it up. Don't say nothing. Jackie don't need no army of people taking up for her. She stood up there. She made that comment or that statement. She got to stand on her shit. Take everything that Buffy throws at her. Because I'm just like with Cecil, you know. Jackie just got mad because somebody confronted her about her foulness and, you know, she didn't have nothing to back it up with concrete evidence of why she presented it that way. And then she didn't want to really give an apology because she really felt like she was the authority of everything and she can't tell people business. So she's like, mm, that's what Jack, Jack, Jack is wrong. <laughs> but anyway, um, Buffy tells Hevelyn. You know, she didn't shut the F up and this, that, and that, and she tired of her talking out of term. It ain't got nothing to do with her. And if she felt some kind of weight, that's why she's speaking on it. it. Was it the right place to put it out there? Why not? She put her business out on Front Street to people she don't even know. Yes, I was there for but I said, like, girl, stand up, stand up. Make your voice be heard, okay? Then we got Katessa. She sees it's getting really pretty much out of hand. She's like, okay, Dr. Heaven, let's go to the bathroom. Dr. Heaven said, I ain't got to go to no bathroom. She said, but you're going today. <laughs> you're going right now. But anyway, we leave that situation. We got Jackie Tells Curtis. She just wants to go home. She's not hungry anymore. You know, she's trying to bury her head in her behind. Or how they say in the sand, but I'm going to say she want to bury her head in Curtis behind, okay? And I'm like, no, Jackie, you started it. Now it's going to be finished. Uh, Miss Purcell, Mrs. Purcell finished it for you, okay? But that was just foul, 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 foul. Um, then we got Dr. Simone. She talks to Buffy's husband about conflict resolution. You know, could he give some wisdom, some words of wisdom on how we should attack the situation? Uh, Dr. Uh, I think his name is David, I think. Well, anyway, it doesn't matter too much. We know he's Buffy's husband. He goes on and eloquently say, you know, how to approach a situation. Make sure it's very well received. Make sure you, you uh, pitch it out to the people in a, a loving, warming a uh, way where it's receptive and non-threatening. I mean, his brother was on point. I was like, okay, yeah, I see you. And, you know, everybody was feeling it, but of course, not Dr. Jackie or uh, Curtis, okay? I'm like, them two fuddy duddies, please. That's all they want to do is tell other people how to do and, and, and how they should act, but they don't want to look at their own behavior, how it's just uncouth. It's just not kosher at all. Okay, but then we leave that situation. We got Jackie got uh you know, pretty much everybody 
pretty much felt Jack got served up when she volleyed out if we were playing tennis. You know what I'm saying? And she lost that match. It's just crazy how you can be combative over something you started and then you don't want nobody to address you or tell you they didn't like it. And then you can't, you know, chuck it up to like, yeah, I was wrong, apologize and move on respectfully. Now you got to have a dirty, nasty attitude about it. Girl, please, ain't about accepting that apology that you gave. No, it was not really well received. And I would have told Buffett, no, I don't accept your apology because it don't come from a genuine place. And you still are acting like you got attitude, like you are the one that, uh, it, it, it should be in some type of offense or, you know, defense about something. I mean, no, you offended me. I should have the right to tell you how I feel and you should be put in the hot seat for doing such a, you know, devastating type thing. But anyway, uh, Jack has talked to Curtis about Buffy and Mariah. He's talking about, I'm tired of apologizing. I don't apologize to her too many times. I don't apologize to Mariah too many times. No, nah, we, ain't, we ain't doing this much apologizing no more. I'm done with that. Then we move on from there. We got Jack, Jack has stopped talking or stopped telling people business. You know, it's what she really needs to condone and, and, and putting it out in the street. No, it's not for everybody's consumption. It was just her, but better yet, people need to stop confiding in Jack. So Jack won't have no ammunition to put up there, to put out there on front street. Okay, we move on into another day. We got Toya confronts Mariah the very next day and Aiden about not showing up for last night's supper, leaving her to fend for herself. And, you know, pretty much giving her the play-by-play -play of what happened. And Mariah said, honey, I know it. <laughs> then why didn't show up, baby? Then why didn't show up? But anyway, er, the, the cool drinking people got started early that morning. I don't know how early it was, but honey, she said good morning. So I'm thinking it was before 12 and before 8 o'clock a.m. All right, but they up there drinking white liquor. Probably was vodka, tequila, whatever. But they were the cool bunch. You had um, Buffy and her husband, Toya and her husband, Mariah and her husband, and then Simone and Cecil showed up because they called themselves going on another trip, another outing to ride camels and this, that, and the third. But nope, because <laughs> as they called themselves getting on this little rinky dink bus, which really was a Mercedes van, but I think it done did its time. It don't travel too many trips and they need to have an overhaul done on it but anyway they call themselves leaving the hotel maybe 10 minutes out and the whole van or little bus break down child they gotta walk back <laughs> to the hotel on a busy expressway and toya is clowning like none other toya started clowning about the bus about you know it was very compact it, it didn't have no air in there it was just crazy so everybody men and women had to go back to the hotel they had to walk but it, like i said it wasn't that, that far probably was a 10 minute walk if that much then the men go back they send themselves up to go have all these different shots lined up clear liquor and um dr heaven is feeling some kind of way because she see dr damien over there you know throwing it up throwing it back and she said he can't have his liquor it's that in the third and she's trying to like talk to him in a demeaning way, but you know, you can't do that to your husband in front of everybody. You know, if you have a drinker problem, then yeah, he needs to be an AAA. All right, Alcohol Anonymous. I, just, I, messed up. I think I said triple A, but it's the AA, okay? Uh, association. So they gotta help you out. But uh, she told Dr. Jackie to please go on over there because it was 103 degrees out there when the folk walked back. He should have been drinking water, not no alcohol, but hey. I guess he a doctor. He should know. If he fall out, he in good company. <laughs> they can resuscitate him and take him to the nearest hospital if possible or need be. But it was just a trip. Um, she told Dr. Jack to go over there and tell her husband to stop drinking. Cause he, don't, he don't know how to hold his liquor. And, uh, you know, he pretty much confessed to Dr. Jack and her husband that, look, I had to deal with her for 22 years trying to pretty much listen to all her antics, going by what she said the majority of the time, not all the time. And I'm going to have my fun. I'm on vacation. <laughs> so that was a hot mess job. Then they called themselves because he didn't stop. He didn't stop doing what he wanted to do or whatnot. And he shouldn't have unless, like I said, he has a drinking problem. Then he shouldn't have been at the bar, period. But um, anywho, um, they call themselves meeting back at the, uh, once they go and change their clothes, they're going to go out by the poolside, have some hors d'oeuvres or whatnot, and some more drinks. 
And they actually did all that and came back and Honey and Dr. Simone were playing a game with them. And it was so funny. It was hitting on some issues that they were going through in their personal life. It got so bad, uh, especially when it got to Contessa and the whole situation about her resentment about being having to have to quit school. I mean, the question was formed to where it was hitting her. And she didn't like it because she didn't like the uh, ideas that people were talking about. You know, she should suck it up. But then her husband should have been a little bit more understanding, just that third. And, you know, it was just crazy. <laughs> it was a hot, it was a hot tamale. But, honey, I tell you, Dr. Jackie, it was all about her tonight on this episode of season seven, episode 11, Busted Cabo. Honey, everybody was getting into her behind about what she did to Buffy Parcell, which was a hot mess. And she went on, well, she wouldn't own up to it. And her only key players that was rooting in her, uh, excuse me, was rooting on her side with Dr. Heavenly. And you know how we feel about Dr. Heavenly. She just stuck up Jackets behind, just like Cynthia stuck up Nene's and anybody else that she can jump on. So I was like disappointed with Dr. Jack. And, you know, Dr. Hamlin always disappoint me. So it's it's not really nothing to say in that era. But uh, that's all I had for Mary to Madison, guys. Hopefully, hopefully you all enjoyed it and uh, can get some enlightenment out of it. If not, you can definitely try to catch it on replay. And then you can see how devastating that whole episode was where it pretty much showed Jackie as a, uh, a busybody, a no good a non-caring type of make, uh, female who happens to be a professional woman but showed no courtesy or decency to another human being about keeping their uh, medical information and information that was given to her in private, private. So that's all I had. Y'all comment down in those videos if y'all saw it the same way I saw it or y'all saw it differently, okay? But it was lackluster type of um, episode showing. But like I said, the highlights was showing Dr. Jackie continuously in a negative light uh, when it came to discussing people's personal business and putting it out on Front Street. But I'll see y'all next video. Y'all have a great week, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.